Hello, and welcome to the Paintless Studio. Today we're gonna talk about Williamsburg. Do you need a truly neutral gray? Is your favorite color going to fade? And are Williamsburg's earths gritty? All this and more today on The Paintless. My name is Melissa, I'm a professional painter, and I helped found The Paintless. Today, we're gonna to talk about Williamsburg. And why are we talking about Williamsburg? Because this is a brand that has been leading the way for the research in artist paints. As some of you know, several years ago, there was a big upheaval about zinc white. Who brought us the news about zinc white secretly destroying our oil paintings? It was Williamsburg. Who led the way on light facets testing? Williamsburg. There's so much that we could say about the research that this company does, and they make terrific paint. So first, let's talk a little bit about the consistency of Williamsburg. We're also gonna get into some other things like their cadmiums. We're gonna talk about their phthalos, their convenience blends. We're also gonna look at a few of the things that make Williamsburg special as a brand. So over on the paint list, if you type in Williamsburg, you'll see all of the different Williamsburg colors. They have a whole series of neutral grays, which are really helpful if you're a realistic painter, and they're a lot of fun if you're an abstract painter. I use them myself in almost everything that I paint. Also in the Williamsburg line, we'll see a whole set of safflower colors. These are duplicate colors to the colors that are in their regular linseed line, which to me says that they care about the needs of professional painters. We'll get into that. The Williamsburg Earth Series. This is a company with a lot of earth tone. Something I get asked a lot is whether or not the Williamsburg Earths are gritty. We're gonna talk about some of the nooks and crannies in their earth tones, and we may even do a separate video on that because it's a lot of fun. A few years ago, I was working on a very intense color mixing project that I undertook, and I found that there were a couple of areas where Williamsburg paints really stood out, and there were also areas where Williamsburg was a bit too stiff for what I was doing. So I'm gonna place Williamsburg alongside other impasto brands as far as consistency. So these are paints that come out of the tube very impasto. So you have like Old Holland, you have Gamblin, there's a few others. Something that I love about Williamsburg is that a lot of their colors are more workable than the gambling colors that I've worked with. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. And they also have a really high pigment load. So sometimes when I was working with gambling, I thought, what is it that I'm sensing in this paint that isn't the pigment? There's something else that I felt like was going on. I don't actually know what they're doing, but with Williamsburg, it was more like I'm working with this paint and I really can feel the pigment in there. And so these are very highly tinting colors. Also, pigments differ in the way that they are going to behave when mixed up into a paint. That's that's just part of life. And so some brands really try to harmonize that or homogenize that. Other brands kind of let the pigments show through. So Williamsburg is more letting the pigment be the pigment. That said, there is also a very Williamsburg consistency. These are impasto paints that have a lot of versatility. So they're, I, I would describe it as a highly pigmented soft impasto. So you can actually get a really, really crisp level of detail. At the same time, a lot of these colors have good glide. These are paints that are quite amenable to being just thinned down with a little bit of oil to be made so that you can apply apply them thinly. So here's a weird secret paintless studio tip that we stumbled upon as we were doing testing. If you use a Williamsburg color, and I'm not talking about like the gritty earths, but if you use just one of the normal Williamsburg colors and you add a little bit of Rublev oleo gel, I found the consistency to be strangely reminiscent of Vasari. And so if you're curious about Vasari, but like haven't tried them, but you have Williamsburg and oleo gel, um, it was amazing to me how just a little bit of oleo gel kind of transformed Williamsburg into a different consistency. There are a couple of moves that Williamsburg is making that I'm noticing as a painter that kind of signal to me that this is a brand that is speaking to serious artists. So Williamsburg is actually part of Golden Acrylics. They have done so much oil paint testing. It is wonderful. They have a newsletter called Just Paint that is published, which I recommend that you check out. That is a treasure trove of information. And I personally wish that all brands would research their products as much as Williamsburg. But basically, Williamsburg brought it to the attention of the world that the standards that were created 40 years ago for how pigments are measured as far as their light fastness testing and the tables that got written up back then are not actually sufficient for some of the pigments in their current form today. So there are changes in the way that pigments are manufactured. There were a handful of pigments that weren't having the light fastness performance that everyone thought they were. So the way that this works is a lot of times a brand will just cite what is in those 40-year-old tables for the light fastness without testing their actual paint. 
And depending what mixing white you use with the paint, that can actually dramatically change how light fast that pigment is. And so this is very new information at the time of making this video. So I encourage all of you who are interested in the light fastness of your paints to head over to Just Paint, take a look at the emerging research and light fast test your own paints. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can put them up in a window, mix them with the whites that you use, sort of just see what happens. Leave them there for a while. You can actually find more information below. Alizarin Crimson is still out on the market. You can actually use Alizarin Crimson to kind of see how much sunshine your paints have received. It's very easy to do. There's a few pigments that just threw some real wild cards out there and it is fascinating. So thank you, Golden, for doing that research. Much appreciated. Let's also talk about zinc white briefly. This is not a video going into the ins and outs of zinc white. Zinc white has been linked to embrittlement. Most of our viewers will already be aware of this. If you aren't aware of it, you can also check that out. The link will be in the description to find out more about the research that was done on zinc white or PW4. I am a huge fan of the choices that they made with the cadmium colors. They have a very hardy range of cadmium. So these are very chromatic colors that tend to have great light fastness. Again, check out the details though of the light fastness testing because it's fascinating. They have a really lovely cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow light. I loved their cadmium yellow mediums. When I was doing this specific color mixing project, there were a couple of times when I had reached for another brand and it really wasn't what I had in mind for that bright, punchy, high chroma cadmium yellow. And I found what I was looking for in the Williamsburg. So I don't know what they did or how they chose their particular cadmium yellow medium deep. Their extra deep is beautiful. I'm a big fan of their cadmium orange. And also they have a really special cadmium red light that is kind of in between the orange and the red. When we did a bunch of hue comparisons among brands, the intuition I had that like, this is like a special color was born out. And it was kind of fun to later read their description to see that like, oh yeah, no, totally. It is. It's like an interesting balanced color. They have really really bright, punchy cadmium red mediums, quite versatile in the way that they can be used. With their true neutrals, these true neutrals were born out of the needs of painters who are aware of the Munsell system. You don't have to be a Munsellist though to use these. I recommend these so highly. These are the backbone of my realistic painting and value is one of those things that is kind of difficult to nail down. And I've done the work of mixing my own truly neutral grays according to Munsell. It is a lot of work. It's a helpful exercise and I love that I can just go buy them <laughs> from Williamsburg because when I want them, they're right there. Getting that true neutrality actually Actually takes a handful of pigments, so I appreciate that they make those available. So safflower oil is another one of those things where like there's some controversy about it, but actually there really shouldn't be that much controversy because if you get into the science of it, it gets a little bit chemical, but you have your linolenic acid, linoleic acid, and all of these different things. But basically it's very helpful to know when you're using safflower oil, what layer of the painting you're using it, if you're using it at all, why you want to have it if you are using it. Whereas a lot of other brands will just mix safflower oil into their colors because you might get just a a little bit more chroma, there are trade-offs here. That is another resource that there will be a link below for more information about safflower oil. But what I love about Williamsburg is they went through and did the light fastness comparisons, like how did these paints age? How much did they yellow? And found out which ones it would really benefit to have in safflower oil. And they made a linseed version and a safflower version so that you as the artist can understand which one you're using when and why. Talking very briefly about their phthalo colors, another thing that I like about Williamsburg, they are one of the companies that make the two different phthalo greens. So we have the blue shade and the yellow shade. They also have their regular PB153. They have some different blends of things for turquoise. Those are all great to check out. I really appreciate that they took the zinc white out of their convenience blends. Not every brand did that. Zinc white is totally a personal choice. You do you. But I really appreciate that Williamsburg reformulated their convenience blends to take zinc white out. And so that did mean that one or two actually they weren't able to be approximated and they said, hey, we're going to take it out anyway. They have a couple of good convenience blends that I use a lot like the Severs Blue. 
with earth tones, it can be a little bit difficult to know exactly what kind of colors and properties you're going to have because a lot of times you could flip the tube over and it will have pigment information. But with the earth tones, this is really hard to navigate because you have only a couple of pigment codes that cover wide swaths of hue, grittiness. You really don't know what to expect, how these will tint out. With the Williamsburg earths, it is a pretty safe rule of thumb to say, are Williamsburg's earths gritty? The answer is kind of yeah. However, However, their synthetic transparent red oxide and their transparent brown oxide are both really smooth. Let me give you the other paintless studio tip. If you're looking at a Williamsburg color that has the word French or Italian and it's an earth tone, the chances are pretty high that it's going to be gritty. Williamsburg actually has a chart which shows you the coarseness or fineness of the grind of the paint, which is really handy. However, I think that there could be another column in between these. When we're talking about grittiness, it's it's not the sort of like lab grittiness where we have the thing where you can see exactly the particle size, but more of just like an experiential grittiness. And part of that is the audio quality. So if I can feel the grit under the palette knife and I can hear the grit, to me that's almost like another notch toward coarseness. Pretty much all of the French and Italian earths, I would move a step toward coarseness. Those are going to be what I would call specialty earths. And we may do a whole video about these because these are really interesting colors and we can get into some of the details about like where I like to use them, where I could see other people enjoying them, kind of their similarities and differences to some of the other earth tones that are out there. As we mentioned before, a lot of formulation changes happened with zinc. There have also been some super sad pigment discontinuations that have affected the whole industry. But again, what I love about Williamsburg is they were the ones who published the information out there for artists so that we could be like, oh my gosh, what? All of PV49 is going away? Oh my goodness. And you know, actually Lizard and Crimson got discontinued. I mean, there was there was some shakeups last year. This was crazy. This is PV49. I super love the way that Williamsburg did this color because they also made the safflower version so it didn't yellow as much as the one in linseed oil. This is a variant of cobalt violet light and this one is one that will be missed. Unfortunately with the loss of a bunch of different what I would call specialty quinacridones like the PR206, 207, there are just some ones in there that will be missed. Link below in the description you can find Golden's updates about that. So there have been some reformulations in the last year. You can check that out and of course we will keep you updated on the paint list. Do you have any favorite Williamsburg colors? If so, what are they? What do you like about them? Have you had any weird experiences? We want to hear about that too. Together, we can all learn more. Thanks so much for joining us and happy painting. <laughs>